one saw on the wall of the Prague Metro station the inscription, Jesus is the answer, probably written by one of our evangelical Christians. That same day, someone else had added the words, but what was the question? It reminds me of a comment by philosopher Eric Fagerin. The biggest problem for today's Christians isn't that they don't have the right answers. The problem is that they have forgotten the questions to which they are the answers. Answers without questions are like trees without roots. But how often are Christian truths presented to us like felt, lifeless trees in which birds can no longer find a nest? Only the confrontation of questions and answers can return the real meaning and dynamic to our statements. Truth happens in the course of dialogue. Let it be said over and over again, faith is not a question of problems, but of mystery. We must never abandon the path of seeking and asking. A problem can be solved once forever. Mystery, unlike problems, cannot be overcome. Mystery invites us to try to understand it again and again, to go deeper and deeper. Mystery is abysmal, bottomless. We must shift from problems to mystery, from apparently final answers back to infinite questions. Questions are sometimes more important than answers. There are questions that are so good that it is pity to spoil them with answers. I'm convinced that God approached us as a question rather than an answer. Nowadays, many people no longer raise the question of God. Maybe this is precisely the time that God comes and poses the questions himself in the way he once did to his servant Job. I'm going to ask the questions. You answer them. He asked us, as he did his servant Adam, where are you? He asked us, as he did his servant Cain, where is your brother? When we ask who is God and whether God exists, we ought to ask, first of all, who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? What the meaning of my life? And also, where is my brother? The Irish philosopher Richard Kearney wrote a book entitled The God Who May Be. Truly, God does not come to us as an fact, as an external object, but rather as a possibility, as a challenge, as an offer, as an invitation and an appeal. When you accept the task I offer you, I shall be with you, God says to Moses in the Bible from the burning bush. God comes to us as a question whether we are ready to accept the task to which he invites and challenges us. If we accept the task he has chosen for us, he will lead us and give us the friends to go beyond the previous boundaries of our capabilities. He will give us the friends to go beyond the boundaries of our ego, our egoism and our self-worship. He will allow us to experience the miracle of self-transcendence, the miracle of love. His first words to people are very often, fear not, have no fear.